Howdy, I'm Matt and in this episode we are going to be taking a look at the Benetian BN220 GPS and also the BN880 GPS and there's also one which is not here which is the BN880 GPS but Q and we'll find out what the difference between that one and the one which we have here. So first things first, both of these GPS units are perfect candidates and the Q, I hasten to add, are both perfect candidates for use with iNav. Now the reason why I can say that is because if we take a closer look that both of these we can see this little round bullet thing end just here. This is an onboard battery. So when we're using these GPS units with iNav and we go to a new flying location is that we will get a GPS lock after say a minute or so. Then if we go back to that same flying location the next day for example that little battery helps the GPS unit remember the previous satellite. So second time around of powering on the model in the same location, that genuinely means that you get a faster GPS lock. So when choosing a GPS, always look out for the battery because there is a cheaper BN180 GPS. However, it doesn't have that battery and thus typically it takes longer for the GPS to get a first time lock. Again, taking a closer look at both these GPS units, you'll see the first one is approximately two centimeters by two centimeters, or about three quarters of an inch square. When it comes to the larger BNA80, is that this one is approximately 30 millimeters square. However, it is worth noting with the A80 is that it's actually a double-sided board, and you'll notice that we've got this extra board in the middle, especially if we compare to the 180, is that this extra board in the middle is a compass. Now on the topic of compasses is that if you are flying a fixed wing model then you should never ever turn on the compass and the reason for that is that G the GPS is perfectly adequate however if you're flying a multi-rotor then you wouldn't want then you would not want the BN220 GPS you would want the BN80 880 GPS if I can spin it out and the reason for that is that you would require a compass because unlike a fixed wing model which is genuinely always going forwards and the angles are not that sharp with a multi-rotor your ability to yaw in any direction requires that you have a compass for good navigation aids. Now let's take the attorneys over and it's really important to note that we were looking at the bottom of the GPS units. What we've got on here is the, you'll notice this silver patch here in the middle on both of them, okay? That is actually the antenna. So you may already be making yourself a decision that I'm, hey Matt, I'm gonna go for the, the 880 GPS because it has a bigger antenna. And that is actually a valid reason for going for the slightly larger one. Oh, and by the way, this is also the key point to note. The third one, which is missing from here from this description which is the BNA80Q. The Q is missing the compass so if you're a fixed wing pilot and you want the larger antenna like the A80 but you don't want to pay the extra for the compass or want let, you don't need the compass then go for the BNA80 uh, BN880Q. Now just for the record I will put links to the 220, the A80 and the A80Q in the video description for you. They're all available on Banggood. So just coming back to my point, the antenna for the smaller one is almost, and it would be fair to say, half the size of the A80. Now there are reasons why you would want to go to a larger antenna. A, you're more likely to get a GPS fix much faster. Oh, and as far as protocols, they will support the common ones, NMEA, uh, G uh, GLONASS, etc, etc. Oh, and both of these will run on U-Block 7, so they will not only run, so if you run, if you set these as being U-Blocks in INAM, then they will up both update at five hertz or five times per second. However, you can set both of these to be in U blocks seven, which you may or may not know that there's a drop down option in iNav, and I'll put that up on the screen for you. Uh, and that will change the refresh rate for both of these to 10 hertz, or in other words, twice as fast for changing one setting. Also, as far as I am aware, these also support the Galileo. 
satellites as well, which is a, another cluster of satellites, which is a, when talking about iNav specifically, you, there's a setting which I'll put in the video description and up on the screen for you. Enable that uh, and that will allow you to gain access to many more satellites, thus a better GPS lock. Now, you may be wondering, Matt, why do you own two of these? A, because I wanted to do a shootout test just to prove that twice the antenna space gives a faster lock time, but also for the different sizes and models which I own. So let's zoom out for a moment and take a comparison between two different size models and why one might be more applicable than the other. So in front of us I have the Zoe HD Dart 250 and as you can see by the size of my hand this is a ultra light supposed to be aimed for 250 gram model. Now it's actually worth noting that Zoe HD who makes these models have a system called Copilot and again I've got a separate video on that and I'll include a link in the video description for you uh, which is a all-in-one system uh, which is make it a little bit easier than saying use a 9 app for example. Now with the Copilot system Zoe HD actually used the Benetian 220 GPS uh, and that one has proved to be quite reliable uh, and as such in many of their models which are set up for co-pilot in this instance it's actually up underneath here which that's where you fit the GPS unit, bit of double sided tape on it and then stick it up underneath here or maybe a hot glue around the side and then just put it up inside of here uh, and that's where we have a specific spot for it. However, if we compare this tiny little model to a much larger one, I will grab the Finwing Olberbird as an example for you, you will see as it comes across your screen is that this is a much larger model. I have a slightly different GPS unit on here which is one for meant for the Pixhawk but it, again it works in a very very similar fashion. The size of the GPS puck underneath here is, is equally as large as the Venetian 880. Again per, nice big placement again on top of the model and uh, just going slightly off topic you may be wondering well Matt you had one model there and it was in a plastic case and then you had another model uh, and the GPS was hiding underneath foam. Is the antenna affected by this foam? And the answer to that is no. What your GPS unit will be most affected by is very close placement next to a speed controller, your ESC, or very close to your antenna for your receiver, or perhaps using 1.2 gigahertz. Just be aware that band 8 is also very close to the frequency which your GPS works on. As such, you may run into reception issues, which you then may need to look at your FPV equipment. Now when it comes to supplied voltages for these GPS units, in fact let's zoom back in and take a closer look. Both of these will work from 3.3 volts up to 5 volts, maybe a little touch more. There seems to be a lot of confusion within the RC community that, oh my goodness me, you should power these units with 3.3 volts and definitely not 5 volts. However, that's more of an urban myth. These little boards have voltage regulators on them, so yes, while technically correct, the GPS units themselves require 3.3 volts, there is a voltage regulator on these boards which knocks the voltage down to the correct voltage for the actual GPS units themselves. So the point which I'm trying to make is that you're perfectly fine to power these with 5 volts, and many flight controllers will give you that 5 volts to power them. Now you may have noticed that there's two different size plugs here, and the reason being is that the B the N220 GPS only requires ground and 5 volts and then you have a TX and RX line. Now just a daft point, when it comes to TX and RX connections, you take the TX connection from your GPS and put that to the applicable RX pin on your flight controller and then you take your RX pin from your GPS unit and you connect that to the applicable TX pin on your GPS, on your flight controller, spit my words out. This other one here, the larger uh, BN880, you'll see that the plug's much larger and we also have a thicker cable in here. And the reason for that is not only do we have our ground and five volts line to provide it with power and we have RX and TX, but we have two additional wires which connect SDA and SCL across to our flight controller and we don't normally connect those because those are for your compass. However, if you did want to connect your compass and you've gone for this one, then those are the two wires which you would then need to connect to your flight controller and then tell your flight controller that you'll have a compass connected if it doesn't automatically detect it. 
Now, I've got to be honest with you, given a choice, I would normally always go for a larger size GPS. And the reason for that is just where I live, specifically here in the UK, I always have issues with uh, getting a satellite lock on the ground, but the second that I fly, get the model in the sky, everything's hunky-dory. So in the vast majority of my models, including the Dart 250G, which is supposed to be a lightweight model, I always go for a larger GPS puck unit. Now, I wouldn't suggest the BN880 for, for your model. If you're just a fixed wing pilot, instead go for the Q version, which I'll put a link to uh, over on Banggood in the video description for you. However, if you're, you're running a multi-rotor, this one here with the compass built in would be absolutely fantastic. Now, I do not for ever, and do not take me wrong for one second, is that the little one, and I'm calling it little, but it's perfectly capable, the BN, Venetian BN, one, sorry, 220 is perfectly adequate for most applications. And again, those applications like the Dart 250 from ZoHD or maybe the Drift or smaller models, then this GPS unit would be perfectly fine for you, especially is that there is definitely a weight difference and size difference between these two boards. So in summary, both of these GPS units and the Venetian 880Q are good choices for GPS units to go typically into a fixed wing. We only need the compass if we are flying a multi-rotor. However, don't panic if you've got the A80, which is the larger one, which has the compass in there. If you do not connect it up or you do not enable it within your flight controller software, specifically with an iNav, or maybe another tool like RG Pilot, for example, then the compass will not be taken any notice of by the flight controller software. If you're on a budget or you have a smaller model, the 220 is the perfect solution for most models. However, if you want a faster GPS lock and you need a compass, go for the 880 and it will cost slightly more. And if you just want a larger GPS puck for faster and better reception when it comes to gaining a GPS lock, then go for the BN880Q, the one which isn't here at the moment. But again, like I said, I'll include a link in the video description for you. The last point which I am going to stress is that you can power all of these devices using 5 volts with an out in issue because they do have an onboard regulator. It's just because in an older specification somebody mentioned that they should only be powered with 3.3 volts but that was the GPS unit which is on the back of the module and remember these boards, if I get them the right way around, is that they have regulators on them to knock the voltage down. Oh, one last big tip for you is that if you own one of these GPS units, go really careful of this metallic surface on here, uh, on both of these and any other GPS unit, because that is the antenna. If you put sellotape on these, for example, and then peel the sellotape back off at a later date, and you're basically ripping off your antenna. So go very careful with that face surface. And do remember, you can place these GPS units inside of your models, but just make sure they have clear line of sight to the sky. There are no other metallic objects, for example, in on top of them. Just a piece of foam is perfectly fine. And again, think about GPS units which are sat in your car. You may have a GPS unit which is actually in your dashboard and it can see up to the sky. It's the same instance here. The GPS will work through glass, probably not through metal shielding. So on that note, for myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench to chat about GPS units. I know it could be a slightly more boring subject, however, there is a practical side here because GPS line units like these are required for tools like iNav or Argipilot or other flight controller software, and there are subtle differences between the different devices which are available. If you have any questions or comments, you can let me know in the vi video description under Underneath this video here on YouTube. If you're new here, howdy, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. Don't forget to press the red subscribe button and of course hit the bell notification so that YouTube lets you know when the next video is out. And as always, from myself Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench and I'll see you again shortly. Cheerios!